Okay guys, it's negative 18 out there. And so we're gonna see what the pole barn is doing. Hey guys, so it was uh, negative 18 last night and right now it's negative six. So uh, the thing's still running, which this was designed for negative 20 degree temperature. So let's see what the temp is in here. Uh, got my old wheel horse here, some other stuff, but let's walk in and see what the temperature is. Kind of messy, really messy, still running. Okay, the side we're at 56. Now, it looks like my other area is already 57 degrees because there's nothing, there's no flow. Uh, this one, we're running a, let's see, 90, uh, about 100 degree inlet and coming back is about 80. So it's a good 20 degree uh, delta T, which is good for this. Yeah, what I did was usually I run this at 120 degrees, but I knew there was going to be a well, 20 degree drop in temperature. So I shot up to 130 degrees just to help it out. Gives it an extra little 10 degrees. But uh, yeah, let's see, 56, so it's set at 57. Now, I've noticed that uh, if you have stuff on the floor, it really uh, restricts the heat underneath it. It's gonna be uh, hotter. You can uh, feel a difference once you move the box or whatever. So that's not really helping out by letting the heat get off the floor. Let's see. Yeah, and this one's up to 58. And uh, let's see what my phone says for temperature. Neg to six. Feels like neg to 20, but wind chill doesn't matter. But wind chill does matter in this case because the windier is, it seems like uh, it, it saps the heat away from this building, from the steel building. So guys, uh, that's a quick update um, to show that a thermal mass build like mine with no slab insulation underneath, I'm not wasting energy and it's not going directly into the ground and not heating the building. It's heated up pretty good. As you can see that it, this actually does work. And uh, this thing should be up to 57 probably in like four hours, three hours. So. So guys, I will be doing an updated video on how to tell what's affecting your floor on how to troubleshoot it. See if you did it wrong and you don't have enough tubes in the ground or if your building is not well insulated or you're getting really wonky numbers like uh, say you got uh, you know 100 degree you know inlet outlet to your your slab but it's coming back at like say 50 there's a problem there hey guys just an update on this heat uh it's going to be uh let's see negative 20 negative 24 tomorrow uh so i'm just showing you how good this is heating so um let's come over here i put a thermometer out here to see what the temperature is out here See that? Let's see. There we go. Now that's negative 13. There's a little negative mark. So it's negative 13 out here. My hands are freezing. So I'll come in here quick. Let's see what it is in here. Come on. And we got it at. 
There you go, 50, 58. So in this circumstance where it's going to drop so much, a boiler with, with outdoor reset will be a better option because then um, you don't have to come over here and turn it up and down. Usually I run this at 120 degrees, but with the temperature dropping, uh, I give it a little bit more, like I said in my previous one. But with the outdoor reset, it will automatically do that, and so then you don't overshoot it. Like, um, right now it's supposed to be set at 57 while it overshot it by one degree, which is not a big deal here. But say if it's gonna be neg to 24, and it's gonna be like 10 degrees the next day, then this may go up to like 59 to 60 degrees, which is not bad, you know? But that's why a boiler with outdoor reset does that automatically. But for uh, a boiler with outdoor reset, you're looking at about, well, you know, 3,000, 4,000 bucks, where this thing runs 800. So for, uh, you know, a $3,200 savings, I can just do this in anticipation and let it run over a couple degrees. So guys, remember, this is a thermal mass build. I have more tubing to heat up the sand and the dirt, and then it heats up the concrete, and I use no slab insulation underneath my concrete. So there's no slab insulation. And I'll go into further detail about that, but, um. You know, people say, oh, you're going to waste, waste it all. You're going to waste all, uh, it's never going to heat. Look at, it's it's going to be negative 24 and the th thing is going to be 57 degrees, which with radiant floor, 57 degrees, just think of 57 degree, no wind, sunny day, and that's how it feels. So once you get work and you get, you get a little bit of sweat and if you're working good. So this is working no slab insulation and even if i'm am losing money to the ground the savings on buying that insulation it, it offsets it and i won't come all ahead for 20 years so i will tell you how how i figure that out and i'll show you the math on that so um yeah it's better, you know, big commercial buildings, they don't use slab insulation underneath their radiant floor systems because the cost savings isn't there. You know, a sheet of that is expensive. Hey guys, so uh, let's see what the temperature is. It's negative 15 out here. Uh, let's see, I'll show you what it says. Let's see if we can see that. There's a little negative sign over here. There, see it? Negative 15, and let's see what it is in here if uh, this works. Uh, there's my dog, can't let him outside. He, even though he's 12, he'll still chase after the deer and stuff. So, and in here it's uh, 58 degrees. So, this is like I said, a thermal mass build. There's no slab insulation underneath this floor, this ground. I'm heating the soil and it's creating just a big like thermal battery with BTUs. And uh, you can see that it heats this place pretty good. Got a bigger area, this place is a mess, I'll clean up. But yeah guys, so uh, hopefully this gives you some questions and dispels the myths about using slab insulation. As long as you properly put enough tubes in, you know, like I have a ton of tubes over here, but tubes are cheap you know, 70 bucks for 300 feet. As long as you have enough tubes and stuff, it's very feasible to do this. And then if any of these go bad, I, I always have the concrete, so I can put my tubes in the concrete if these go bad underneath. So longevity wise, this, this thing will last forever, you know, for at least 50 years, because I can replace the tubes, put in my concrete, you know, it'll be a little bit more problem with trench it, but so guys, uh, hopefully this helps you out that a thermal mass build without no slab insulation, you're not wasting heat to the ground. You're actually heating the ground up, which is heating the building up. And with the insulation on the outside, you're creating like a chimney effect. So um, hopefully this helps you guys plan out how you're gonna do your build and to show you that 
you don't need slab insulation if you do it correctly. Hey guys, so uh, coldest night so far, neg to 27. On my temperature gauge, I'm reading, let's see, negative 29. Let's see if we can figure this out. There we go. 29, negative. So, it's the coldest night by far. So, uh, this kind of went downhill temperature wise. It's going to be warm up, but let's see what the pole barn's done. So guys, my battery died. So uh, it was negative 30 like, a couple hours ago. So let's see what temperature is in here. It's uh, 55 degrees. So my thermostat is set at 57. Uh, so it's 55 in here. Numbers, it's only put out 90 to the floor. So both ones are running at 90. I could go over here and set this to 140 and bring it up to temp pretty quick. But it's going to warm up to like negative two degrees today so uh it's going to get up to 50 whatever 57 pretty quick it's probably going to overshoot and then the rest of the week it's going to get up to like 20 degrees so this thing will probably not run for the next three to four days at least maybe five days because there's going to be so much btu stored up in the slab now that it's going to not have to run for four or five days. So that's one good thing about having so much thermal mass is once you go from cold to warm, it won't have to run, but it will overshoot it though. It's gonna overshoot it probably to about 50, uh, it'll overshoot to about 59 degrees to 60 degrees, which is not a big deal in an uh, outdoor building. That's not for comfort, you know, where you're trying to keep the comfort level you know steady so guys um yeah it's not gonna run probably for five six days it might not even run for a week after this after this cold spell because it's gonna be so much btu stored up in this floor that it's gonna give it off slowly to equalize the temperature so guys thanks for watching